Welcome back. Today we're continuing to look at monitoring network traffic using hardware, meaning monitoring tasks that can be performed by routers. Previously, we looked at NetFlow, which is one example of this. And we saw that the need to develop custom hardware to perform the monitoring tasks is somewhat limiting to our ability to innovate and introduce new types of monitoring. So in this video, we're looking at doing the monitoring in a software-defined network, which has the advantage of having a programmable control plane where we can introduce a new monitoring primitives just by writing some new software. The authors of this paper make a very bold claim, which is that their proposed monitoring technique includes zero measurement cost. As we're all familiar with, the SDN paradigm enables centralized control of the network, meaning that the control plane is physically separated from the routers themselves, commonly referred to as the open flow switches. So now we have a communication channel between the data plane, which is operated by the switches, and the control plane, which is centralized in the open flow controller. One of the things that this controller can do is react to the conditions of the network. By having a centralized view, it can then perform optimizations on a global basis. So in this instance, we have the path between A and B becoming congested by the traffic flowing over it. And so potentially the open flow controller could observe this and reroute based on the traffic load. So we see this detour path following ACB instead of going directly between A and B. For this to work, of course, the controller must be able to find out when the link is congested. Many measurements rely on active measurements, so injecting more traffic into the network in order to perform the network. Other types of measurements we've seen, like NetFlow, are passive measurements, where they just observe the traffic passing through, but that limits the sorts of measurements that can be collected. With software-defined network measurements, we have to be concerned about the additional control traffic that will be generated between the SDN switches and the controller. So with each of these examples, performing accurate measurements incurs some sort of high overhead. For the method that these authors are proposing, the claim is that they're able to perform measurements with no additional cost. So they're leveraging the existing control traffic to measure the network. Their benchmark here is switch polling. If you're not familiar with the operation of OpenFlow, you may want to go look at the CS3502 lecture that talks about the rule-based matching that OpenFlow switches perform. As a quick review, the switch operation has a set of rules in a table where there's a match and a corresponding output port. As a packet that matches a new flow arrives, the switch generates a packet in message and sends that off to the controller, which can then create a rule for this new flow and put that rule in place on the switch. Or it could modify an existing rule. So now we have a rule that will match these packets and tells the switch to output them via port two. Then when subsequent packets arrive, they don't need to go through this whole process again. They can just match the rule that's already in place for that flow and be forwarded as usual. The flow may end when the rule expires or when the rule is explicitly removed by the controller. In either case, when the flow is removed, a message is sent to the controller containing the statistics for that flow. So when the controller observes the packet in message, it knows that a new flow has started on a particular port. And when the flow is removed, it then has the duration for that flow, as well as counters that tell it how many packets and bytes match that particular rule. Then it could infer the average utilization contributed by that particular flow on the link that it's using. So FlowSense, which is the approach being proposed by these authors, is something that runs exclusively in the controller. It didn't affect the operation of the switch in any way. And it's going to keep track of the flows that are in operation on the switch based on the packet in messages that have been received. So here we see different flows starting at time one and time two and time three. And these are all running in parallel, so they're all consuming bandwidth in parallel on the link. And at time four, the first flow expires. And so now the controller is able to perform a partial estimate of the bandwidth consumption on the link. Remember, it doesn't get statistics until the flow expires, so it doesn't know how much bandwidth are being consumed by flow two and flow three at this time. It only knows the average consumed by flow one. So then at a later point in time, flow three ends and the controller gets the statistics on that at T5. And now it can create a new checkpoint and update the utilization. 
So now after the fact, it knows that 50 megabytes per second were in use at T4. Then when flow two expires, it is able to improve its estimate even further. So at checkpoint T6, it knows that there's no flows left because all of the flows that are in operation during that time have expired and it's collected the statistics. And so now it can update the utilization estimates for T4, T5, and T6 and further improve the accuracy of its estimate. So all of this is happening as a plugin to the OpenFlow controller. So this plugin is maintaining a utilization table and running a utilization monitor, as well as a parser that observes the messages coming from the switches. We have two goals, which are accuracy and timeliness. These are quite commonly at odds with one another, meaning if you take more time, often you can perform a more accurate measurement, but if you are time constrained, accuracy may suffer. And we note that they're operating this on a test bed of OpenFlow switches and inputting to that test bed a previously recorded traffic capture. So we have the controller and the two switches along with the source and destination host to replay the traffic from. It's using one continuous background flow and then three separate short flows. And the controller will need to estimate the traffic usage and then they can compare against their ground truth since they're generating the traffic. They're also comparing against pulling the switches. We should note that switches generally maintain counters about the traffic traversing their ports, and these can be monitored via SNMP. However, this polling generates additional traffic over the network. So we see from this graph that the polling revealed some fine variations in the traffic, whereas the flow sense estimates are flat because they're averaged over the duration of the flows. But aside from that, the estimates are both very close to one another. So we lose some of this very fine grained instantaneous utilization values that might be revealed by polling at a high rate. And the trade-off is reduced overhead. Looking at the utilization estimate example from earlier, we have our three flows of different durations. And we observe that we have this delay in getting the total estimate between the time that the first flow ended and the time that the last flow ended. So we can generalize from that, that getting the full utilization information is typically delayed, and it's gonna be a function of the duration of the flows in time. So if we know the duration of our longest flow, then we know that our delay can't be any longer than that. And here they're using a CDF to show in general the shape of these flows, and so the corresponding duration until they get full details on the bandwidth utilization. So from this, we can see that within about 100 seconds, 80% of the checkpoints are fully known. But the question is, what if you don't have 100 seconds to wait? So looking at how many checkpoints are completed after just one second, and the corresponding percentage of utilization that's reported, we can see that it follows a normal shaped curve and and so we see that after just one second, about 30% of the checkpoints are able to report 90% of their utilization. If we increase that time to five seconds or 10 seconds, then more and more of the checkpoints are achieving greater than 90% utilization. Looking at the average time between the checkpoints, we're seeing that this is typically on the order of seconds. We're not going to get millisecond level accuracy out of this, just second level precision. So in conclusion, we see that FlowSense is able to use existing control traffic to estimate utilization. And while it's not a perfect estimate, the big selling point here is that it doesn't introduce any new active measurements or even any new polling or data transport cost to retrieve passive measurements. Depending on the time scales involved, the estimates can be quite accurate and don't have to be too delayed to achieve this accuracy. So one thing that authors didn't really get into is what if there are very long flows? For example, imagine a flow being something like streaming an entire movie. That could be a significant portion of the traffic on the link that's unable to be measured until it completes. So there might need to be some hybrid method where a flow can be monitored in the middle if it runs longer than some period of time. Another overhead that they didn't get into is that this method relies on there being a packet in message for each new flow. 
However, many OpenFlow rule sets rely on wildcard rules or rules that in some way can match many, many flows. So they don't need a new flow rule for every single flow. And so making that a requirement of this method in itself may be an additional overhead on the system. Lastly, they didn't look at latency, but are hypothesizing that there could be a similar approach to measure latency in the future. That wraps up this talk. I hope it was helpful and we'll see you on the next one. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.